Praise the Lord. Greetings to you. Greetings to you, brothers and sisters. Uh, delighted that you took the opportunity to tune in, to share with us as we partner with KBN to ensure that the word of God, the truth, uh, the power of God is expressed in our generation. It is our desire to, to reach out to those who are without church homes, those who have not established a solid fundamental relationship with the Father, and to edify those who are already in the body of Christ, just keeping one another encouraged and as iron sharpens iron, just working together for the good and the promotion of the kingdom of God and his authority in the earth. Uh, my name is Walter Turner. I'm pastor of Grace Congregational Church, and we bring you these programs simply out of love. We bring you these programs because God has assigned us to share this good news. It is so wonderful, the things that the Lord does in us. And I tell you, when we get excited and we have good news, we ought to try to spread it. We ought to try to make sure that everyone we come in contact with has the opportunity to experience the good things that uh, we know that the Lord does in the lives of those who trust him, who lean on him, who turn to his word, and most of all, who believe it and govern their lives accordingly. And so I'm privileged to be here and to share with you uh, for these few moments uh, thoughts and things that God has impressed upon our hearts to, to just try to uh, enlighten, empower, edify, strengthen, and win those who are looking for uh, shelter, win those who are looking for refuge, um, and so we're delighted uh, to be here and to be able to do this. This is an extension of the ministry of Grace Congregational Church. And know this, I'm not here alone. Many times you will just see me, but there are people who are praying. For those of you that are watching, there are saints who are praying um, that the effect of the word of God and what we minister would find its place in the hearts of those of you that are listening. So know that you are never alone. God is with you and you are surrounded by folks who love you and love the Lord and want to see the best outcome for you possibly by living and being in the will and the order of God. And so, again, we're grateful for this time that we share. Write us a letter. Call us by phone. Let us know if you're in our community, if you're in the city of Houston. Stop by. At the end of the broadcast, uh, our numbers will be there, our address, and you can call, uh, check out our web page and get the order of services, find out a little more about us. Just go to gracecongregationalchurch.org. Have a look. Let us know you're listening. Uh, send us an encouraging word. Uh, we certainly would appreciate hearing from you. And so God bless you and thank you again for sharing with us today. I want to talk to us uh, about a couple of things. I'm, I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks here, the next couple of uh, programs, we'll be dealing with uh, what I call the three R's. Now those of you that don't mind dating yourselves. Uh, you might remember when we were in school, they talked about the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Not arithmetic, arithmetic. And that was commonly known as the three R's. And the idea behind that was that if you could master these three R's, you pretty much were setting yourself up for success. You were able to go out into um, the workforce. You were going to be capable of um, handling and holding a job, maybe even creating work, and you would be a productive citizen in our country. Well, I'd like to suggest to you that in the kingdom of God, there are three R's too. And I would like to suggest that if we can master these, then just as you would be productive in our culture, 
I think that if we would really embrace these and take another look again at the implications of them and then to really apply them to our lives, then uh, certainly we would be productive in the kingdom of God. And so today I want to talk to you about the first of the three R's, which is reconciliation. The second one that I will talk to you about in the future programs will be regeneration. And then the third one will be restoration. But today we want to focus our attention on reconciliation. Many times, as I said before, um, there are phrases, there are terminology, um, there are words that we use, and I think sometimes we just carelessly pass them about. We just kind of say them because we heard someone else say them um, without really giving them the serious thought, uh, the meditation that God admonishes us to do, just as he did Joshua. He said, meditate on my word day and night, and, and you will make your way prosperous. Sometimes, rather than to just let these be little catchy phrases, it would be a good thing to take them into maybe your meditation and prayer time and to allow the Holy Spirit to unfold the impact and the implications of what God has said in his word and what that truly means for a believer. So today we want to focus again, as I said, on the first of the three R's, reconciliation. Now, this, this message of the gospel, this good news that God is still sovereign, he rules in the hearts and minds of men, access to God is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's good news. That's the gospel. And the gospel is never outdated, nor does it lose its power. Our culture tends to strive to find things that are new. They, you know, the latest fad comes along and boy, everybody rushes to it. Uh, they find out oh, there's a big crowd over here and they're doing it this way, then everybody thinks that's the way to do it. Sometimes, though, brothers and sisters, the reason a thing has lasted long could be is because it's productive, it's solid, it's good. And even as we are growing and God is expanding us, we want to be careful that we don't throw the baby out with the wash. That what we're being influenced by is really the word of God and not the cultural influences of our day. Because it is the word of God that will stand forever. It is the word of God that God has established his promises on. And heaven and earth will pass away before he changes his word, before he changes his mind, backs up on what he's already promised. And so one of the assurances that we have in salvation and our relationship with God is the sovereignty of his word. And just as much as we like new things, we like sure things too. We make investments. We, we uh, will invest in things and we choose things to invest in. And most of the time you will hear us say, it's a sure thing. It's a sure thing. It's a sure win. Well, I would like to suggest to you that there is nothing that can be more of a sure thing than standing on the word of God. And so we want to deal with this concept of reconciliation and the power and the, what it brings to the life of the believer and, and how it elevates us and liberates us and what a wonderful experience. And it's more than just a word. It's more than just a phrase. But when we embrace it and it becomes a part of our inner being and we comprehend it, not just with our intellect, but through the power of the all-knowing Holy Spirit, which brings to us all truth, 
then that truth empowers us to live and to be liberated and to live in the freedom in which God has ordained for us. Now, I remind you now, freedom, not to just go wild and do anything, everything, but freedom to live as God actually ordained us to live, to live in agreement with the absolute divine purpose by which God has sent us forth into the earth. That's the freedom that we have. And so we want to talk about this reconciliation. As we grow in the truth, we have to be mindful that we don't allow ourselves to get disconnected from the principles of Scripture. But these things are there to empower us to possess and to experience the benefits that the principles of the scriptures talk about. We don't want to get disconnected. Turn with me, if you would, to Colossians, the, the second chapter, verse 19 there. And so Paul is writing and he talks to him. He says, listen, let's go back to verse 18 for just a moment. He says, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by a fleshly mind. 19 is where we want to come in. He says, and as a result, you're not holding, or this person is not holding the head, holding to the head from which all the body, all the joints, all the band have its nourishments and is ministered to and they are knitted together and they increase with increase from God. So we want to be careful and make sure that we're embracing biblical principles, endeavoring to walk according to the word and the principles that's laid forth for us in scriptures. We do not search the scriptures just for head knowledge, but it is designed to strengthen our personal intimate relationship with the Holy One, with our Father, Abba. The gospel, the good news is relative and, and will always be relative until Jesus returns. You know, there are folks that say, well, that Bible, that, that's kind of antiquated. It's outdated. It was written hundreds of years ago. But the interesting thing about the scriptures is all of that being true, that it's written hundreds of years ago. It's amazing how relative it is after all of this time. Just a little quick fact. The Bible it's such a bestseller. It's so popular that many of those that record the, the sale of books do not even include it in its annual sales simply because it would always be a bestseller. I think, I think, I think that's something we can trust in. I think that's something we can uh, almost say is a pretty sure thing as we say. So let's move on. This message, this gospel, this, this understanding of what God has done for mankind through Christ Jesus is, is valid. It is the power of God that saves us, that restores us, that brings us into right standing with him. And so it is still working, and it is working by faith. It's working, it's working because we believe it and we accept it. Being reconciled. Let's, let's start to define this for just a moment. What does it mean to be reconciled? Well, it really, in its simplest terms, means to bring into agreement, to bring into harmony, to make compatible. And one of the things that we must understand about this reconciliation we must understand that 
Man needed to be reconciled to God. Man, we did, needed to be brought back into harmony with our creator. We needed restoration. When you look in the book of Genesis and you see that man in his disobedience immediately began to separate himself from God. These were his own concepts. These were his own ideas as a result of the disobedience. He began to try to hide from God. God shows up and says, where are you? Let me suggest that that's not a geographical question, but that's a relationship question. You know how it is when you're in love with someone or you have a relationship with someone that you love dearly and maybe things are not right and uh, you can sense that. You can feel that. And many times you, you ask and you walk in and you say, what, what's wrong? And that, that's not uh, looking around to see that there's a chair out of place or um, the, the back door is open or something like that. No, no, no. That's, that's speaking to our relationship. So it was with God when he spoke to man. But God, in his love and his desire to continue to have the relationship that he established from the very beginning with man, he reconciled us to himself. And that's a great, that's a great, that's a great place to praise and to celebrate our God just in itself. You know, one of the things that's, that's interesting is that usually when there is a strain in the relationship and there's a need for reconciliation, it is pretty much acceptable that the person who causes the riff in the relationship, the person who is responsible for the breakaway, the person who pulls away is the person who is ultimately responsible to come back and to repair or to put back together what they tore apart, to restore or to reconcile, to ask for forgiveness, to, to, to make sure that everything is smoothed over and there is harmony again. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, this is what blows me away when I begin to think about this. That being true, God had done nothing. We needed to be reconciled to God. Yet God, because of his love for us, this is the impact and the implications of some of the things when we talk about the love of God and the psalmist picks it up and after meditating and musing on his relationship with God, he asks what is man that thou art so mindful of him? While all through scripture we see the implications and we see the impact of God's love for us because in many instances we are the ones, man, you, I, are the ones who disobey, who pull apart or pull away from him. The, we are the ones who choose to try to go a different way. And yet God in his love, he reconciles us. He brings us back to himself. He restores our relationship with him. He makes sure that we again are in harmony with him. Wow, guys, listen to the implications of that. We are in harmony with God. We move with his order. We flow with his will. We have been reconciled back to him. Wow, isn't that marvelous? You know, sometimes, man, when we have uh, bad relationships or we have a little riff in our relationships, it takes us a while to let that person back in to our inner part. That, it, it takes a while before we begin to trust them. Oh, but I am so delighted that God does not deal with, deal with us like that. 
many times. The instant we accept his word and the promise of reconciliation through Jesus Christ by faith, it is activated in us. And he brings us back to himself and he holds nothing against us. Man, he doesn't even remember some of the things that we have done. He doesn't keep showing us the instant replay. He doesn't hold it over our head as leverage to cause us to obey or to want to stay with him. You know, I wouldn't want to be in a relationship where a person, um, in order to get me to be there with them or to share with them, was always manipulating me by reminding me of how much I was indebted to them because of my wrong actions. Boy, that, 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 that's some kind of relationship, isn't it? Don't think we would like that. But I tell you, God, the Bible says that he doesn't even remember that, that the blood of the lamb and, and the power of his love toward us. When we accept this reconciliation and understanding that it blots out all of our transgressions, it cleanses our slate and we are able to stand as brand new in his presence. And isn't it wonderful that he brings us right back to himself? Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves you and me. And it's only a trick of the devil, the enemy, our adversary, who always tries to remind us and, and tell us that we're not worthy or somehow uh, there's a blight. God loves us so much that he reconciles us to himself. And the power of this reconciliation, it lifts us and it causes us to stand and it causes us to be cleansed and purified on a daily basis. And brothers and sisters, I know many of you say, well, yeah, I had these problems. But listen, if you really love God, you know before anybody that there need to be some corrections made. And when you love God, you will be willing to allow the word of God and the spirit of God to make those kinds of corrections. So that's why he says, the writer says that there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. We don't have to walk around guilty or with our head hung down. The power of this reconciliation, this first aura, God bringing us back to himself. Man, if you walk in that, man, what can, what, I understand why Paul said, what can separate me from the love of God? I don't know if we're comprehending the depth of that. Oh, oh the, the breadth, the width, the height of that love, because it is that kind of love that empowers us, as I said from the beginning, to live as God has ordained for us to live, to live in the freedom as the sons and daughters of the most high God. Man, if we will just obey his word, if we'll look in there and really believe that, then it will start to have the impact on our lives that God, God's word can do. Listen, don't allow yourself to be tricked or deceived. If you've been reconciled to God, then as Romans 5 verses 1 through 10, take the time to read that. It talks about how we have peace with God. These are the kinds of things, brothers and sisters, in this time, in this, this era, this generation. We must fill our minds. We must fill our spirits. We must meditate on the word. We must, again, look at scriptures and allow the spirit of God to bring to us the depth and the reality of those things that we read about. These principles in scriptures... We're left for our learning, for our application, for our benefit. And so reconcile. I am no longer a foreigner. I am not a stranger to my creator. I am not a stranger to my father. He knows me intimately. And he has restored my relationship with him. 
He has brought me back. I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing because of the power of this reconciliation. And each day, each day, I get up and I remind myself that God is with me. Listen, brothers and sisters, in the Genesis, when the Bible says that God walked with Adam in the cool of the day, that is the same experience that God is willing to afford us. Those of us who have been reconciled, brought back to him. To have even in this generation. God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He has some established principles. That will last throughout eternity. And so, brothers and sisters, yeah, I know there's a lot of things that are pulling at our attention, trying to draw us away and filling our minds and just occupying our time and our space. Be careful. I'm not saying not to enjoy yourself. It's nice to go to a ball game. Nice to have a little recreation. All of that is good and well. But please, please make sure that you don't get out of balance that those things don't take precedence over the word of God and the quality time that you spend with the creator. Again, reconciliation. Think about it. To be brought into harmony with the creator. It's happened. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, your faith, your faith, let your faith work for the spiritual principles that the word of God puts forth. Give us a call. Come by and share with us. Our information will be on the screen. We'd love to see you to share in one of our times of praise and worship, our time of study. The things that God gives us is for the people of God. And there are people of God throughout this land. You are one of them. Why don't you come? Call us. Come on, be a part. We'd love to... Hear your voice as we're lifting up praise unto our God.